Hey, welcome to Parkle Channel. We are F3 Movies on YouTube. We talk about movies and films and stuff. Hello. Hi. God, that felt bad. Welcome to M3 Movies. I'm Jack. I'm Brian. Uh, how, how do we sound, guys? I, I hope good. Oh, yeah, we're uh, really trying to figure out this microphone situation. By we, Jack being from Talk. Yes. Uh, yeah. Not very technologically advanced. Myself. That was a fun. Would you say that was an hour that I was just sitting there trying to figure everything out? Yeah, probably. Yeah. All right. Cool. I, I got a wet. I was doing the planning sheet and I finished, so I was just like reading about Pete Buttigieg instead. And yeah. What a man. What For like, a man. Like thirty minutes. I was just sitting here. It was a good time. What a cute man. Mary Pete from Talk. Um. Yeah. Uh, so welcome to M Three Movies. We're a movie podcast that talks about movies and films and stuff. Um, yeah, what you do? Uh, God, I don't know. It's a nice day. Week. It's a very nice day. It is. Um, if you're listening on YouTube, um, die. you're wrong. Yeah, die. Um, because now we're on Anchor and Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and Spotify and Stitcher and Breaker and Radio Public and Over. Um, and you can find us at all of those places by either looking us up there when you go there, um, or just going to anchor.fm slash m3movies and looking us up there. Um, no, what the, no, that's not right. Not looking up. I'm sorry. I'm very, I'm frazzled. I, right I now. understand. Oh, they, they got it. Go yeah. to the website. Yeah, you can go to anchor.fm slash m3movies, and then you'll find links. You'll, you'll figure out what to do. Yeah. You'll, yeah, you got it. <laughs> got it. Big smart people out there. Got it. Real smart people. Um, So, I mean, I guess let's just jump right on into it, huh? Yeah. Cool. Then let's go, Uh, what is this? Celeb talk? Uh, uh, RG maybe we pull you on a celebrity who no, you would be interested in, no, in, in no, hearing us talking no. about, and whoever <laughs> wins said poll becomes the subject of discussion. Uh, go jingle. We like the work of these certain celebrities, and so we're gonna appreciate them and what they've done. Who do we have, Ryan? Uh, so I did the two women thing. It's very good for you. Yeah. Uh, oh. I picked Octavia Spencer and Viola Davis. You know what? That takes a lot of courage, and I'm very Famous proud of you, Ryan. <laughs> um, and I thought Octavia Spencer won, but I, thank God, just double checked, and Viola <laughs> Davis won. So we're talking about Viola Davis. That's pretty good. Um, what do you think of Viola Davis? I think she's a pretty cool guy. She's not a guy. What? The point of this is that they're women. Wait, what? But wait, I'm I'm so confused. We only ever talk about guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I want to see? What do you want to see? I want to see Widows. I have not seen Widows either. Dang, it was that supposed, useful to, be, it was supposed to be pretty good, right? Pretty yeah, good. I didn't like it a lot. She was talking about, that she was going to talk for Oscar, but didn't uh-huh, get it because yeah. the movie didn't get seen enough. Yeah. Um, um, but she finally won uh, 2017, 17, 2017 Oscars fences. for Fences. Uh, have you seen Fences? That one too, no. Fences is okay. So Fences is a play that they filmed, practically. Oh. It's not, but like it, it, it is. Um, and she plays. I mean, Denzel Washington's well, it doesn't, wife. It doesn't really look like it is. It looks very much like a movie. No, it's a, no, it's a movie, but like it takes place in like one location. Oh. It's like two locations. Oh, okay. And so, like it's basically they just like because it was a play. And oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, when they transferred it to the screen, they were just like, well, we could make this a movie, or we could just keep the play Doesn't and just film it. I appreciate that. So they just did that. Yeah. Um, Denzel Washington and I think Viola Davis had been doing it on uh, in New York on Broadway for years, mm-hmm. um, and they finally filmed it. It's directed by Denzel Washington. Denzel directed it, yeah. which is why it's kind of boring to watch, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Viola Davis... In that movie is insanely good. She's yeah. the best actress, the best actor in the movie for sure. Uh, she probably won for like her one scene. You've probably seen the scene, right? Uh, what like, scene? The scene like where she's like screaming about like uh, her dreams or whatever. You know, I don't like think so. you know, it's, people call it the snot scene because she's like crying so much that like snot is coming out of her nose and like oh. she's just like going 
going on. It's very famous. Um, and it's one of the best acted scenes of the decade. Uh, and was I, I usually don't like it when people win Oscars for like one scene, but that was merited. That's the best scene from that movie. Is it argument scene? Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. It's, she's talking about how like he doesn't respect like her, and she, he's like, "What? What? Like, what? Did you ever like? What did I ever do to you?" And she's like, "Like my dreams. Like yeah. I didn't live my dreams. You know. Yeah. Like what about me?" Oh, yeah, you know, I'll I'll watch that after the hashtag interview. It's a uh, it's a good time. Yeah, it's a good one. What else uh, has she done? Well, in that same year, she was oh, also okay, in yeah. Suicide Squad as Whoops. Amanda Waller, which also won an Oscar. It did. Yeah. She's in two Oscar winning films that year. <laughs> no, but my favorite one of my favorite scenes in Suicide Squad because I think it's just so dang funny. So like they send her on, they send the Suicide Squad on this mission, mm-hmm. and they don't know what they're doing, but they get there and it real they realize that they're trying to like save Amanda Waller, basically, because she's in trouble. And they get there, and Amanda Waller is in, like, this room with, like, a bunch of interns, basically. And she's like, oh, shoot, the suicide squad is here. I gotta go. And on her way out, she shoots all of her interns for no reason. She's just like, this was all classified. You weren't allowed to know this. Bam, bam, bam. And kills them all, and then just walks out. And then that's, like, all that is addressed. Nobody cares. Her perfect life was in danger? I, I don't know. She's no, I don't think no. so. She's like the person that puts the Suicide Squad together. She's technically a good guy. Yeah. But she just kills people for fun. Because, yeah. You know what I'm uh, quickly realizing by um, taking a, a quick look at her IMDb page? Uh, what? There is not a movie uh, that she's been in that I've seen. That's good. <laughs> Which I feel like is bad. Probably. Yeah. But she's a good actress. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I believe trust it. Me. I believe trust it. Trust me, she's good. She's she, pretty good at what she does. Can't get this far without being great. She's going to be Harriet Tubman in an Untitled Harriet Tubman project. That fits. To come out in... That's almost a little too obvious, time. I think. Like, it's almost, like, too, like, oh, you're making a Harriet Tubman movie? Who should we get? Like, I think everybody's answer in Hollywood, like, 99 out of 100 people would say, oh, my old name is... Uh, I don't think it's going to be, like, a real... Like, too perfect. I don't think it's going to be a real legit movie. I think it's probably going to be like a History Channel kind of movie because this guy that's directing it has done um, Sons of Liberty, uh, oh, wait, John be. Adams, uh, Into the West, and Frank, the whole story. So just I like, stand, a, whole ton of, like a whole ton of History Channel kind of. Yeah, I stand by what I said. Um, how to Get Away with Murder. I haven't watched that show because I don't watch a lot of TV. Yeah. But I've heard good things about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. lasted five, five years, years. Now. I think this is the it's pretty, on its, it's last pretty long series, time. or its last season. Um, yeah, I'm excited. She's going to be in the Suicide Squad, the James Gunn version. So oh, that right. be fun. they're making another one. Is it? I'm assuming that one will be good, right? Is it going to be the the same Suicide Squad, or are they just going to do it? So over it's actually there? interesting. This was like a movie news thing that I just passed over because it wasn't that big. Oh, but okay. uh, okay. James Gunn didn't. He chose not to reveal whether or not it was going to be a sequel or a prequel or a reboot. Like he was just like, I'm not gonna tell you. You're just gonna find out. Well, I mean they're keeping um Mark Margot Robbie, Robbie's still there, Will Smith uh, is not there anymore. Jai Courtney is still Captain Boomerang. I like Captain Boomerang, okay? People can <laughs> people can go away. Captain Boomerang is fun. They're gonna have uh, Oh my god, this is so, yeah, it was literally just I love Boom Dot Man. And Idris Elba is not in it. Joel Kinnaman's gonna be in it still. He was probably the worst part, or one of the worst parts of the, of the original Suicide Squad, but maybe he can first flag. He's like the uh, good guy in Marine that is like in charge of like making sure the Suicide Squad don't do bad things. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. He was um, also RoboCop in RoboCop 2014. Yeah, the bad RoboCop. What? No! It was so good! Um. So, wow, yeah, Joel Kinnaman really hasn't been in too many great projects, has he? No. That's too bad. That's okay. That's too bad. Yeah, you deal with it. Uh, huh. Um, what else? What else can we talk about? About Viola Davis. Fences? No. Nope. I already talked about that. I meant The Help. The Help? I have not seen The Help. Me neither. Which is, like, shocking. Because that seems like a movie I would have seen. Yeah, Jenny really uh, loves it. She had a Best Actress nomination for that movie, so I'm assuming that she's good. I've heard, um, um, especially now in the... Um, sort of more progressive time that it's apparently a very like white savior kind of film 
Uh, I, I couldn't say, I couldn't speak on that. Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't know Emma Stone was in it. Emma Stone is in it. Uh, Jessica Chastain. Uh, is that Octavia Alice Spencer won for this movie. This was her Oscar. Alice and Janney. Oh, I love Alice and Janney. Yeah, this is uh, Octavia Spencer's Oscar. Um, right. Yeah, that's why I actually picked Octavia Spencer and Miles Davis because they're both in the house together. Yeah. I um, think Octavia Spencer was in like an episode or two of um, of what's it? Uh, Thirty Rock, which is a great show if you haven't seen it. Check it out. Um, do you want to move on? Sure, sure, sure. Lovely, 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 um, lovely, lovely. Oh God, where's the planning sheet? There it is. Uh, let's go. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Give me a just a, a just a hot second. All right. Um. Yeah. Cool. Let's go. New releases. Go jingle. New releases. New releases. New releases. They're out today or tomorrow or next week or maybe they're already out. Who's to say? What we got? What we got? Do you want to start? Oh, start with, like, oh, not sorry. as famous ones. That's exactly what I was thinking. All right. <laughs> Let's start with the souvenir. Do you know what the souvenir is? Of Didn't course. It? I've been looking forward to this forever. So the souvenir yeah. is a Sundance movie. Oh. Uh, that also just showed a can and is just released. I think it released last week technically, but I think it's going wide this week. Oh, that's um, good. And it is currently the highest rated movie on Metacritic of 2019 at a 93. Yeah. Um, it was David Ehrlich's, the only critic I listened to. Yeah. It was his second favorite film coming out of Cannes. Uh, I don't know what it was called right now. It's um, I don't know. Um, was it Brightburn? It was not Brightburn. But Brightburn's <laughs> also coming out this week. Uh, this what the we'll souvenir is like uh, it's a romance with Tilda Swinton in it as like some controlling mother, mm-hmm. and like I don't really know much about it. I'm trying to keep away from things just because I'm seeing it tomorrow, and I figure I can. Yeah. Um. I mean, just looking at the pictures, but, it looks great. It's yeah, it looks gorgeous. gorgeously filmed. And Tilda, you know. Tilda. I'll see Tilda. Yeah. Um, yeah. Looks like fun. You remember her in Endgame? I do. She was very there. I mean, she's Tilda. <laughs> yeah. I like Tilda. Um, yeah, this looks cool. I'll probably check it out if I get a chance. Yeah. Uh, who's it directed by? You want to come tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I would if I could. Are you working? Uh, no, we'll discuss it later. Right. <laughs> we can make plans. Um, wow. Oh, it's already got a sequel. The oh, yeah, they were talking about that. I saw that. I didn't take that. No, I did not. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Joanna Hogg. Good luck. She, nice. She's, yeah, she directs that. Um, what else has she made? She made something else. I've heard that. Unrelated. Name huh? Unrelated. Archipelago. Exhibition. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe Reach for the moon. Person's name before. Staying alive. No. Okay. London well, Bridge. We're, we're, circle. Okay. Well, no, Network it's, Seven. It's just us. <laughs> it's ne- moving on. <laughs> um, Brightburn. Yeah, this is like the evil Superman thing, right? Oh, is it? Yeah. I literally have. Well, it's not really. It's not really Superman. I but have like no idea uh, what it is. It's like this kid is like. Uh, it's like a what if, hey, what if a child from another world crash landed on Earth, but instead of becoming a hero to mankind, like he proved to like be Superman. something far more sinister? Yeah, it's like it's like if Superman was evil, basically, okay. um, in the form of a child destroying things. Movie, right. um, it looks pretty dumb. Yeah. Uh, Boy, this kid really likes hanging his head. Huh? She yeah. flips through the. IMDb pictures. Should be interesting. Um, yeah, this really doesn't look great. Um, I think you'll see it. Oh, it's produced by James Gunn. Produced doesn't mean anything. No. Um, it's written by Brian Gunn and Mark Gunn. Any I'm wondering if there's a relationship? And this, yeah. this, the kid that stars it is actually Jackson A. Dunn. Oh. So I'm wondering if that's if there's a relation there. Wait, no, Dunn. Oh my god, you know... What am I saying? Dunn and Gunn are two different names. Okay, that's just sort of... That's a coincidence, Um, but I don't know if Brian Gunn and Mark Gunn. You know where you've seen Jackson A. Dunn, actually? He's young Ant-Man. Okay, kill yourself. That's... Yeah, kill yourself. I hate you. (laughs) 
this kid has already done more with his life than I ever will. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, yeah, a movie like Dumb, I'm probably not going to see it unless somebody like is like, hey, let's go see Frankfurt. And I'm yeah. like, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, this... Nothing better than me. All right, Brian. Uh, I'll leave this up to you. Do you, do you, do you want to talk about uh, Booksmart first or Aladdin first? Well, I'm going to save most. I saw Booksmart. I got to see it earlier. So okay. I'm going to talk about it later a little. Well, actually, do I have just, one. Do you want to just save it? I, no, I have no, more movies that I've right. seen. I'll talk about books right now. I'll talk about other movies later. Um, so do you want to talk about a movie I haven't seen that's supposed to be mediocre or the best movie of the year? <laughs> Let's talk about a movie that you haven't seen that's All right, Aladdin. Mediocre. <laughs> um, yeah, so the reviews for Aladdin are surprisingly mediocre. Not I thought terrible. they'd be worse. Yeah. Um, I think that actually comes from the benefit of releasing such terrible trailers. I, everybody was like, oh, this isn't that bad. I really... I wasn't expecting awful reviews. I was expecting along the lines of Beauty and the Beast, something that like isn't god awful, but isn't gonna be the most memorable movie ever, and isn't gonna really stick with people. The too problem much. with trying to remake, yeah, it classic Disney movies, is that the a lot of them, especially the ones that they're trying to remake, mm -hmm. are really really good. Yeah, uh, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Lion King is coming out. Um, Dumbo isn't very good, good. but uh, yeah, no. you know what I'm saying? So, Aladdin is a movie that's hard to top um, anyway, and I think that remakes just feel so... I think remakes are going to inherently feel bad if they don't add anything, which these movies tend to not. It's um, almost like exactly the same script, isn't it? Yeah, so, I mean, it's just not as... Can, like, it's just Aladdin, except instead of Robin Williams and it's, his iconic voice. It's, it's Will Smith. Will Smith in, in like desperate pain, trying, yeah. you know. Uh, so it's just, it's just the same but slightly worse. Yeah, and that makes it I, a lot see, worse. I think it was. But, I think it was last week. Um, they released a clip of the of Prince Ali. Um, I did not watch it. It. I mean, I think it perfectly kind of encapsulates what I would imagine most of this movie is. It's a desperate attempt to remake something without really the love or energy that the original had. It's just very flat. It's very, like, slow, and I, I mean, I can't even really tell if Will Smith is trying, because it's so, like... It's ugh. very hard to tell that yeah. Will Smith is trying. <laughs> Except for, like, ten seconds. Yeah. Um, but... It's just, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I just struggle to see the point. I'm not gonna hate on it too much, because it's it's inevitable now. All of these remakes are going to happen. These are the only movies that I feel comfortable calling unnecessary cash grabs. Yeah. Right? Like, you can make the case for, like, certain, like, Marvel franchise films, for example. Like, yeah. you can say blatant cash grabs. But, I mean, like, eh, whatever. They're both in the universe. They're at least, like, these people, these, these kind of movies, I feel like, are made for no reason other than to profit off of the original. Um, which is fine. But, you know, it's not going to trying out something that is as good or better than the original. Right. So, well, right, yeah, I don't know what to expect. I mean, because the original did have something behind it, some, like, moving force of somebody that cared about it. Um, exactly. And, like, and it's, it's, it's evident. Um, like, you can't necessarily even really point it out, but you can tell. There's something about art where you can tell yeah. someone cares about it. Well, I think that the problem with Aladdin specifically, and I know I just said this, but yeah. the, the problem with Aladdin specifically is that there is no possible way to even dream of recreating or changing or whatever to Robin Williams' portrayal of the genie. Right. That is the most, I would say it's one of the most iconic Disney characters. Yeah, I think that more people would know the genie like, by like, looks than like Jasmine or like oh, Aladdin. Sure. Like the genie is the genie. I mean, look at um, look at how much they marketed him. Actually, I I, I watched an essay um, a couple of days ago, um, and I I wish I could remember who made it, but it was about how Disney advertised Aladdin based like solely off of Robin Williams and the genie, yeah. despite him wanting it to be more about the movie. Um, that's a unrelated, but yeah, it's it's just it's 
such a high bar that it's just going to fall flat inevitably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when it's Robin Williams. Like, if it's, like, a great voice performance by, like, Al Pacino. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's Al Pacino, you know, what's yeah. the big deal? But Robin Williams is, like, this, like, he's not in a lot of movies, mm-hmm. you know? Like, the movies that he is in, all of his roles are iconic, almost. Well, yeah. Like, I mean, he's, I got a couple not of all, like, like, so many of his roles are iconic, yeah. right? Um, his voice is iconic, and, and it's then like, the I tragedy mean, behind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Part of it is how are you going to try to? It feels disrespectful, exactly. almost. Even yeah. though, even though I wouldn't say that it is. Yeah. But it just feels wrong. Yeah. And I think it has, has it going against it, no matter if they cast Will Smith or if they cast like Sorry, an unknown yeah. that's going to just recreate the voice. You know, like it's hard uh, to do. We okay. This whole. The idea of remaking something is interesting, like um, Disney remaking everything, because I'm seeing a whole ton more people just completely tired of the idea yeah. of remaking movies, but people are still going to like go see them, and they're still going to make oh, a I'm ton of money. Oh, I'm going to see it, yeah. See, okay, so Dumbo is the worst movie I've seen this year by sure. like, a landslide, sure. but... Still made it. That's, that's not the point I'm trying to make, okay. yeah. but yes. Um... But what Dumbo does is, so the original Dumbo is like 62 minutes long or something like that. Like it's right. not a long movie. So this movie has, like the first half of it is the original Dumbo remake. And then the second half of it is all new material. Oh. Right? And oh. the new material is garbage. It's yeah. terrible. But at least there's new material. Right? Sure. I, I, I appreciate this idea that they're trying to add on to a classic story. Mm-hmm. Right? This is why I have hope for something like Mulan. Um, yeah. Because Mulan is a movie that is historical in context and is very, very 90s Disney goofy, right? Yeah. It's like the, the, the three characters that Mulan's three friends in the army, for example, are very goofy comic relief characters, right? So I think if you, make, if you remake Mulan, the first thing you do is you ditch those three characters entirely right. and you turn this into a war drama about female empowerment. And I think that that is a completely different movie. And it's like, you can still follow the same structure, too. You can still have her fall in love with Shang. You can still have that love interest there. Um, but it's a completely, you can make this movie really like dark and gritty and violence and yeah. entertaining Brian Baby, and different. Brian Baby, I love you. They're not going to do that. Not in a million years, they're not going to do that. I think that. They're going to okay. make it the typical like Disney pretty and then they, you know. See, but I think that there's a chance that out. they eliminate certain comic aspects of it because I don't think they work as well in live action, well, right? Don't know. It's I the don't same know. thing that you see with Aladdin. If you watch Aladdin, like even the trailers, like the comic parts of the genie yeah. don't work as well right. in live action as they do in animation. And, and I mean, right? they did kind of switch it up a little bit. Like Robin Williams, his genie was, you know, made of different things going all over the place. Exactly. And Will Smith seems more sort of resigned i guess yeah so like there are certain aspects of disney films that don't work as well in live action right yeah. that's why prince ali the sequence was like doesn't seem as yeah. wondrous because you can't like you can't film something in person as wondrous as somebody can draw something right, right? especially now that everyone just expects like a lot of digital cgi when they go into theaters it- there's no so magic there. I think that if they did do something like that with Mulan, I think that they could have something really, really cool on their hands. And I think there are actually stories, like movies about the Mulan story, because it's not like just a Disney story, right? Yeah. That are more dark and gritty. I have not seen them. Yeah. Um, but is Mulan it, a real person? Uh, I don't know if her name is Mulan, but it's based on a real story. Oh, okay. Um, and yes. And yes. Yes and yes? Yes and yes. Yeah. Uh, so I know that that story exists out there, but I'd love to see Disney do that, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and even if they don't make it super violent, like even if they keep it PG, PG-13-ish. Um, I think PG-13. Is even a stretch. Yeah, I'm, exactly. But it's just like, I think that's the direction that you need to take with these remakes if you want to improve upon them. Yeah. Right? Because I love Mulan. Don't get me wrong. I think yeah. it's a great movie. But if you want to improve upon it, I think what you, if by turning it into live action, I think what you do is you eliminate the kids' humor uh-huh. and you make it a war drama. 
because that story is there. That story is in the movie. That scene when she finds the helmet on the sword, mm-hmm. or she places her helmet. He, when Shang finds <laughs> his dead father and like places the helmet on the sword, is a is a deeply emotional scene. Mm-hmm. And you have an entire movie of things like that rather than like things like a girl worth fighting for, which yeah. is, a, which is a song I love. Hilarious <laughs> song, but cut the song. Cut the musical <laughs> aspect of it entirely. Yeah. Like, they're not going to again, but this is what I, I would mean, love to they, see well, them do with these remakes. The thing is, they are currently thriving off of nostalgia. Exactly. Uh, so they're going to do everything that they can to keep it as close to the original as possible. Exactly. But and like, not take any creative risks. Yeah, yeah. No, this is what I want. This is what I want to see. No, I, you know? no, I got you. Okay. Like, I think that this would be so. Cool. You can, you can keep Mushu. Just make Mushu like a cool, like weird dragon, right? Like a cool mystical dragon, rather than like Eddie Murphy. <laughs> you know. Although again, that or, would be or or because that's what Eddie Murphy still, but not as a dragon. That's See, that's what, that's what you yeah. have to do with that character because this is this is similar situation with Jamie, right? Yeah. Mushu Eddie Murphy performance is iconic, right? That voice is just so not, attached to that character. Yeah, not but quite I think, as iconic as Rob. Not quite as Jamie iconic, but it's close. Yeah. I would say it's close. Sure. And I think what you got to do if you want to recreate that character and not have people thinking about just how good the original is, is yeah. change the tone of that character. Yeah. Make Mushu not just, like, a comedic relief, like, guy hanging around with a cricket. Mm-hmm. You know? Make Mushu, like, this, like, weird mystical force, like, his dragon <laughs> thing. Like, even, like, not even, like, a physical dragon, maybe. I don't know. Just make him something different. And then it's a different character. Now. But if you still have the nostalgia, I said, you know? Hey, no. <laughs> um, <I'd do> <laughs> Booksmart. Booksmart is Booksmart. so good. Yeah. Booksmart is the best movie. I've been hearing very good things about it. By so much. Oh my gosh. It's is, the it best still, movie is it still at 100%? I sincerely hope so. This is. Okay, so you know how much I love Superbad. Yeah. This no. Oh, uh, no. It dropped significantly in Rotten Tomatoes. What is it at? 99. Ah. <laughs> uh, so. God, I'm funny. <laughs> So, book smart. Something I said in my Letterbox review, which you yeah. can read on Letterbox.com slash Empty Movies. Oh, um, oh, is that while the parallels to Superbad are going to be drawn, like it's just inevitable. Like right. it's a very similar kind of story, very similar kinds of like lead characters. Um, it thrives because it's Sedona. It's such. I don't even know where to like begin with this movie. It's just everything technically about it and everything just is it's so well done it's so perfect it's the yeah. best comedy i've seen since super yeah. like it's i i don't even know where to begin explaining what makes this movie so great i i, I think the two lead actresses probably are where you go i one of them's named caitlin dever i need to get the other one's name because i will not disrespect this person mm-hmm. um beanie feldstein she's the girl she's um Sir Ronan's friend in Lady Bird. Oh, that's right. I've seen her. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Uh, the other actress's name is Caitlin Dever. These two have the best chemistry on screen I've seen all year, and I've seen multiple romances. Mm-hmm. Um, these two work so well off of each other and so well off of the other characters. Every single character, there's a lot of characters in this movie. Um, most of them are pretty minor, but they all feel so... Tight. 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 They so They feel so real. Yeah. Um, every single character feels like I know what that kind of person is. Like, I know who this person is, despite you being on screen for, like, five minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's largely due to just the genius of the script and just how exaggerated everything is. So, okay, so there's two approaches. I'm sorry, I'm talking for a really long time, but I'm going to keep doing that. (laughs) Um, I think there's two approaches when you make a high school movie that you can take. One is to do an eighth grade, which is make it as accurate a portrayal of high school as you possibly can. Like, go to ninth graders and say, what is high school like? And then write that. The other is book smart, which is where everything is exaggerated. Nothing at all that happens in book smart is anything that would ever happen in a real high school. But it's so exaggerated that the stereotypes are grounded in some kind of truth. Like, the drama kids in this movie are far like more insane than any of the drama kids I actually know. Yeah. Sure. But the roots are there. Right. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I see where you're coming from. This guy who's throwing up 
a graduation party based on murder mystery where everybody is role playing, right? <laughs> oh, no. That's something that like I don't think anybody would do, but I would yeah. do that myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Or like the, the the drug addict girl who's like shows up at every party and is so mysterious and they're like, okay, like I know a few stoners and they're not quite like that, but I kind of see where you're coming from. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh it's just it's so charming. It's so funny. The funniest scene of the year, I, I won't spoil it, it's the scene where they're in a lift mm-hmm. and they're what they're playing they're <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but they're in a lift and somehow they're uh is that like bringing them into the elevator or the car? The car comes the they're in the lift. Yeah, yeah. Um they are charging their phone and the audio from their phone begins playing over the uh audio system in the car. Yeah. And it is the funniest scene yeah. I have seen in this entire year. It I laugh. I haven't laughed that hard in a movie yeah, theater okay. in so long. I mean, you're really selling it for me, right? There are, there's one gimmick in the gimmick gag in the movie. Yeah. And usually I don't like gimmick gags no. because I think that they're just like out of nowhere and they like don't make any sense. But I thought it worked really, really well. Um, the romance aspects of it work really well as well, like the high school romance type things. I think work really well. Um, it's shot beautifully. Okay, so this is Olivia Wilde's directorial debut. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, okay, an actress turned director. Uh, usually when actors become directors, they become really boring. Uh, you make really boring movies. And I was like, so I'm expecting a really, really good script and some really good performances, but overall bland cinematography direction. Yeah. I, I could not be more wrong. This movie is so inspired. It's like, it feels like I'm watching somebody new behind the camera. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, Holy Lord. Billy Lord plays the drug addict girl. She is um, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Like I, I read this thing the other day about how she was so magical on set that they wrote her new scenes by the Thank day. God, wow. They wrote her new scenes like on set because they were like, we need more of her in the movie. Um, this this guy that plays uh, let me see, wait, I'll I'll see his character name and I'll know who it is. This yeah. guy who plays Jared Skyler Gizondo, uh, is great. Jared is like this rich kid dork, and he's absolutely hilarious. Um, Jason Sudeikis as Principal Brown oh, is really? absolutely hilarious. Uh, Jessica Williams yeah. plays a te- their favorite teacher, Miss Fine. Yeah, absolutely just, hilarious. Yeah. Everybody in this hair in this movie works so well. Yeah, it's honestly like if this is not in like my top three or four at the end of the year. Okay. Like I, I gave this movie a ten. I last year for hindsight, I think I had like three tens total. So if this movie like just isn't in like my top five at the end of the year, I will be shocked right right i had yeah i had three tens or wait no four four i had four tens <laughs> last year yeah. uh and this is it, it's the best comedy i've seen since super bad and it is oh i love it so much yeah, it's, okay. so it's so good yeah i'll check it out i, I can't wait to watch it again <laughs> uh let's uh let's move on now uh to movie news that was all of the movies that are coming out uh so yeah, go do. Movie news now, yeah. Are you saving that cough for, oh. the, for the jingle? No, just uh, coughing for that long. <laughs> okay, yeah. Also, it's written by. Oh my god! Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's, it's over. It's, it's done. Go it's, for it's it. It's directed by a woman. It's written by four women, and the main two characters are women. Um, which I think is. Yeah. I thought you would say. I really want to I, make the. Uh, I can't wait to see the day when that isn't news. I really wanted to make the uh, the uh, argument is today. These two actresses, but yeah. they're just not famous enough, and that's the whole reason I took over. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, just we wouldn't be able to talk about them for very long. Yeah. Um. Do you want to save this first thing for later? Because I know you're very excited about this. We can, yeah, sure. Right, we can cool. talk about the smaller stuff first. Uh, Daniel Craig got an ankle injury. Yeah, Daniel Craig hurt himself. Probably because he's fifty-one. Yeah, and he's oh, making he a really? movie. Yes. Didn't he say he was gonna stop making Bond yes, movies? Yes, he did. Like and they like offered him ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no more Bond movies for me. No more. But what if what if he gets a million dollars? Okay. But after <laughs> okay, this one, no more. No more. No more. I, I really have. How about two he's million? Not done. Jesus. Okay, fine. But after he's, that one, <laughs> um, no, he's. Yeah, he's hurt. They say that it won't affect the um, release date, 
Uh, it's already been pushed back so much, so I doubt it's off. Oh, really? They're currently um, filming, aren't they? Yes, they're currently filming. Uh, they say I won't push it back. I, 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 to an extent, believe them, but I'm, I'm just, I've been waiting for like years to hear who the next Bond is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm for. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm far I'm more tired of Craig. No, Daniel Craig. And I think Craig is tired of it. Yeah, oh, for you know, sure. If you watch Spectre, there is just no. Like, the difference, if you watch Casino Royale, and then yeah. right afterwards you watch Spectre, it's two different, it's two completely different performances. <laughs> yeah. Like, Casino Royale, he's, like, so excited to be playing Bond, and he's, like, right. so excited to bring his new take to Bond, yeah. you know, which is what, like, the whole draw of Casino Royale is. In Spectre, he is just so bored out of his mind. Yeah, yeah. Like, no emotion on his face. That's why Matt Smith wasn't the Bond in Yeah, exactly. My, my least favorite line of Spectre is when yeah. he's, Order is the iconic martini shaking not stirred because he just he's so bored he's like really i'm saying this yeah really? he's like martini shaking not stirred god you know what i'm gonna say you know what i'm gonna say come on james goddamn bond right like he's so bored with it and I, i'm hoping that this one's different but yeah i doubt it I, I also doubt it i'm thinking probably because we got rami malik as the villain they might be sort of leaning more towards on that leg you know, I mean, I don't know. I, I, it's been Bond. a while since I've seen a Bond movie, but I mean, tell me you wouldn't be interested in seeing the villain have more depth than James Bond. I mean, I think you just looked at you look at Casino Royale, you look at Skyfall, even right. um, great, great Bond villains. I think the best Bond villain, the two best Bond villains of Bond, right? Yeah. Um, and I mean, if you follow the pattern, I mean, you have a good movie, bad movie, good movie, bad movie. We're on a good movie, right? That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, I hope they flesh out Rami. Um, I can okay. definitely see them using Rami Malik as a kind of like, I'm going to sit here in my chair stroking my cat kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, I can also see them using him to what he deserves to be used. What as. if he was just um, Freddie Mercury again? Exactly. Straight up, no, yeah. literally. Just Freddie he, Mercury. Yeah. His character's name was also still just Freddie Mercury. He James is Bond Mercury. takes on AIDS. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> no, but uh, I, I, I'm I, interested. I, yeah. I'll definitely see it, obviously. Yeah. I, like, it's, I'm, I'm interested. Right. I, I'm a strong proponent of the... I'm a strong supporter of the Daniel Craig Bond series, even though Spectre is disappointing and Quantum of Solace is boring. But those two, Casino Royale and Skyfall, are... Just some of the best action movies that have come out in the last, how long has it been? Like 14, 15 years? Sure. Um, and so I, I won't I won't dismiss it, but I, I think there's some serious uh, concerns. Uh, 13 years. 13? 13. No, 2006, right? Yes. Yeah, so 13. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Um, IFC streaming service? Uh, do you know what IFC is? Uh, maybe. So IFC Films, is it's just an indie... Uh, it's just an indie uh, production company. Production company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're famous. They have I've like uh, Boyhood. I think is probably their most yeah. famous. Uh, they have others. They they did the House of Jack films. Like this is the kind of thing uh, these people okay. do. Yeah. Um, and they're just making a streaming service. Oh, very cool. Um, I I would I I want to buy into it. I would rather have that than something like uh, I don't know than most production companies. I'll say. Uh, uh, are, you thinking, are you thinking of getting the uh, so that's the alternative. I'll, I'll do one of these that. probably. Yeah. Well, either either or, just to have an indie kind of platform. I'll pro- I would probably do IFC just because I'm not as into. Um, <laughs> I, I'm generally not as into classics as I am modern films, right? And I'd rather see modern indies than classics. Um, that's just my personal taste. Uh, the criterion is more popular. Modern stuff. It, it does yeah. certainly. Like Boyhood is also a, yeah. the criterion. I don't um, understand why Star Wars isn't on there. So uh, <laughs> when I'm a really famous indie director and they choose me to forward the movie for that, then Star Wars all the way, baby. <laughs> no, yeah, but they but they also make things. They make like they take risks on weird things. Like they made Human Centipede, the first one. Uh, they did not make the ones after that, but they made Human Centipede. Um, so like they they do things that I think are, are cool. weird. You yeah, know, they do weird things. Uh, I appreciate and that. I appreciate them taking risks like that. I don't think a lot of production companies do that anymore, other than like Netflix. Um, and yeah, I'll, I, they did Blue is the Warmest Color as well. Uh, okay, yeah, brilliant. Um, so I would I mean, love to just have one. They did the Babadook. 
Oh, yeah. Boyhood. Yeah. Um, 45 years. So, like, they, they do these, the Stanford Prison Experiment, which is wonderful. Um, yeah. So, I'd love to just, I feel like this would be the only kind of streaming service that I would, like, scroll through and just see a random movie I've never heard of and be, like, totally comfortable to fucking play. Yeah. You know, because I just, I just, you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. Oh, they did make the other human sound movie. Okay, great. <laughs> I didn't want to get the first time I didn't see it, so it's there. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll probably. I, I don't know how much it is. I don't know if I'll be spending money on it, but. Yeah, I, I don't know how much it is. I'll, I'll try to spend money on it, but, you know, I'm kind of broke, so. <laughs> get a job. I, I'm getting a job this summer. Wow. Yeah, I have one lined up. I'm ready. Ooh. Can you say what it is? I'm going to work at Chesapeake Bay. Oh. <gasps> Can you give me free bagels? I don't think so. Maybe. Would you? Would you anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, you go to be like, hey, boss, I'm gonna take home a dozen ba- dozen bagels. I'm like, yeah, for sure. Um, I'm gonna cut this Tarantino stuff because I don't feel like talking about it. That's, that's fine. fine. That's All fine. right, cool. Yeah, we get to talk. The the basic gist of it was um, Tarantino was called sexist, um, because of Margot Robbie and Once Upon a Time in the West in Hollywood. In it, yeah, it was just his response to a question. So yeah. that somebody asked him, he was like. They're like, uh, hey, I, Margot Robbie is this great actress that you got. She's like proved to be one of the best actresses. Why does she not have as much screen time? And he basically just said, or as much dialogue, she said specifically, like she doesn't talk as much. And he basically just, he answered, I reject your hypothesis. And then Margot Robbie gave an answer. At this point, um, I don't think you can expect Quentin Tarantino to not be a corrupt DOJ. He, he gets accused of a lot of things. Yes. And I think that he's tired of that. Um, some of it merited, some of it not. Yeah. Um, the whole, the, I mean, the whole Uma Thurman Kill Bill car thing was not. Yeah, that was that wasn't was, great. That was um, weird. I, I will say that, that I don't think that's as sexist as it is just terribly, like, terribly motivated. It may be a mix of um, both. I don't know. I, I don't see him. I don't know. I, I, I won't say anything else about that. But I, I, yeah, I think he's, I think he's a little tired of having to like release his movies and be like, no, I'm not racist. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, people said the N word in the South. Yeah, guys. <laughs> uh, Robert Pattinson. You missed the Star Wars one. No, I didn't. Did you go over the Star Wars one? Am I right? No, you want to do Star Wars after that? Of course I do. Are you kidding me? Right, Save this, the best this, for last. This is an incredibly idiot. unimportant Star Wars thing that I put. How dare you? There's a lot. We're talking about Star Wars before Batman. Nah. Okay, so in the rise of Skywalker. Uh, so I, how I feel about Robert Pattinson as Batman is. <laughs> I want to talk about Batman anyway. We can talk about Batman. All right, let's do it. Go for it. So Robert Pattinson is reportedly going to be the next Batman, which is the best casting decision I have heard in years. I'm indifferent. That is wonderful. Yeah. You will not be indifferent when I tell you to watch oh, God, certain uh, Robert Pattinson performances, and you'll be like, oh, yes, no, please. No, 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 no. Go watch Good Time. I don't yeah. like Good Time, to clarify. I don't <laughs> okay. like that movie, but he's like brilliant in it, and it's perfect for Batman. Yeah. Uh, go watch The Lost City of Z, which has nothing to do with Batman, but he's so good in it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Robert Pattinson is one of those actors out there who only <laughs> takes roles that he gets. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Pattinson post Twilight is one of the only actors that I can say well, has only had roles that are <laughs> just designed to challenge an actor. Yeah, and he pulls them off every single time, and I'm really excited for what he can bring to Batman. Yeah, it's gonna be cute. I want him to do. I want. I want his Batman voice to be really like cutesy. Where is the scarecrow? <laughs> I'm Batman. You should not. Have been do you ever like? Do you ever say something and hate everything about yourself immediately after? Yeah, because I just felt that. All the time. I felt that. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I don't. The only thing I've seen him in really has been Goblet of Fire. He was good. Really he, was good Fire. he had, I mean, um, he was in one of the, I think one of the, like what to me is one of the dumbest moments in the Harry Potter movie series, which is when they come back after the, the when Voldemort returns and he's dead and yep. his dad leaves. Like, God, that's uh, that hurts. Yeah, it's definitely one of the best scenes in that franchise. Yeah. Um, yeah, Robert Pattinson. I think that that is such a genius just decision. I, yeah. I struggle to think of somebody who would be better as Batman in this moment. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm very excited for the draft. I hope that it's good. I mean, I think that DC has been on the right track now for a few years. Um, and I mean, yeah, like they had Justice League, which was, I think, more of a continuation of uh, Zack Snyder's universe than like a resemblance of what it is today. Uh, I miss Aquaman, but for even people who said it was bad, they said it was like the right direction. I think I saw a lot of um, in terms of colors, in terms of how to treat these movies. Right. Uh, Wonder Woman was one of the best superhero movies that we've seen in a very long time. Shazam was a really, oh, really fun excellent. comedy. Um, it was barely a superhero movie, really fun comedy. Yeah. Uh, great performances, and I'm excited to see what else that that, those character, that character can do. Yeah. Um, and it, it brings, for like a team-up movie that I'm excited for, like I want to see yeah. what Wonder Woman and Shazam would do together. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. They're such different characters, and I am excited for that. So I hope that other platforms can do what we have. So, we have to do. so then I think, um, sort of something that's becoming more and more prevalent in the DC universe is the uh, different characters or different people playing different characters. Yeah, like Walking Phoenix as the Joker, and now I'm so Robert Pattinson. That. So what I'm most curious about is how they're gonna sort of handle that especially with these characters already kind of existing in this definitely um so something that i thought for a while that they might do was they were going to cast a younger person for batman right Mm -hmm. and then they would introduce him technically they are they they are are. no it's definitely a younger version no no i just i mean i meant like joker yeah (laughs) i'm very excited for joker so um my original theory was that they were going to cast somebody younger like Robert Pattinson, and then they would basically have Ben Affleck have one last movie and um, have him uh, kind of hand down the mask. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe introduce Robert Pattinson as, like, a Robin-type character and then have him hand on, like, Ben Affleck when he dies at the end and then he hands off Batman. Yeah. I don't think that's, that's clearly not what's happening anymore. Yeah. Um, I mean, Ben Affleck is just out now. So I think, done. yeah, he's done. I think the approach is that they're going to just treat it as a new movie. Mm-hmm. Like, they're just going to treat it brand new. Yeah. Um, they're going to pretend Justice League didn't happen, and Batman v Superman didn't happen, Yeah. and then they're just going to start again. Um, and I think that for movies like Joker, for example... I they, think that, wait, they're, um, they're recasting Superman, too, right? I think... So uh, that's been back and forth for so okay, long, yeah, yeah. whether or not Cavill's actually leaving or not. Um, I don't know what the current situation with that is. Um, I'm trying to think who would be the Superman. I can't even think. Wait, of really? One. The guy who created Batman is named Bill Finger. Yeah. Oh. He was the last. He was the last um, Batman movie he saw was before he died. Oh, was it Batman? No, 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 no. no. It was the one with uh, Clooney, right? It was the one. It was one with Clooney. It was Batman versus Robin, or Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. Sorry. God, I would watch Batman Batman versus Robin. Robin, Uh, one with Clooney and Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze. Yeah. And uh, Uma Thurman's Batman, or not Uma Thurman's Bat, Uma Thurman's Poison Ivy. Oh. And the who plays Batwoman in that movie? Um, I hope they. I hope they get another Poison Ivy. That'd be cool. I like Poison Ivy. Right? And then, I mean, she's the problem is, I don't know how you portray that character in today's culture. I don't know. In today's culture? Like a freaking Mortal Kombat character. I I guess. Yeah. I feel like like in this culture. No, I think it would be incredibly easy. If you you followed the formula that Marvel has been running, it would be incredibly easy to make uh, Poison Ivy. I'm just worried that, like, no matter how you make Poison Ivy, it's going to be brand effective. I think the interesting thing to do with that character would be to make her a um, like a hero. Yeah, way. like like, like a captain. Yeah, exactly. That's what I. I mean, that's what I love about Batman villain. Batman has some of the best Alicia villains. Kind of plays Batgirl. Batman has some of the best villains of all time because he they're does. so morally interesting. Like every single yeah. one of them is incredibly deep and motivated yeah, in are. their own way. Wow. Yeah, I, lo- I love Batman. <laughs> I love Batman too. Batman's, Batman's a good time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Do you think they'll? Do you think they'll bring Mark Hamill in as the Joker? Uh, I think I'm like him. Okay. But um, 
Men det går inte med det. This really tiny Star Wars article is gonna take five minutes to talk about. Well, we got we got to see some new stuff, some new stuff. Yeah. Nice, of Ren was a big one. Yeah, so they they said that the Knights of Ren would be in it. We've like we're finally officially seeing the Knights of Ren. Yeah, I'm like pretty um, sure because Star Wars was like there's the Knights of Ren. Richard E. Grant got oh, his role God. announced. Somebody General, else did. General Pride. General Pride, very on the nose there. <laughs> or or if it's pronounced differently, then it's like Richard E. Grant. It's He's pretty pretty. E R Y D E. I love Richard E. Grant. I love Richard E. Grant. I I mean. <laughs> I've only seen him in one movie, but yeah, he's I, brilliant in it. So. I wasn't expecting him to be um, the First Order. I mean, like, it was it's, it's obvious because of the way that he looks. Yeah. Um, but after seeing Can You Ever Forgive Me, I was kind of thinking they would go another route with him. <laughs> like, I'm not disappointed. I'm excited. Yeah, God. I'm, I I'm love excited. Richard E. Grant. Um, so and then somebody excited. else got their role announced as well. Um, What's her name? Uh, gosh, I don't know. Right, we'll get back to that. But uh, yeah. the the, put up, the thing I put in here, which I think is interesting. Oh, we also saw that this would be the end. I think this was pretty specific, but this would be the end of the Jedi Sith in general. Oh, like, um, that makes sense. so David and Dan's from Game of Thrones, their trilogy will not involve Jedi and Sith. Uh, future trilogies like Ryan Johnson's will not involve the Jedi and the Sith, right? So it's going to be different stories just in the universe, which I think is the right move, and I think yeah. it warranted that. Um, and then the tiny thing that I put in here that I thought I would just talk about because I like it is that uh, the rise of Skywalker is reported to increase Ray and Kylo's like Force connection that they had in oh, uh, cool. the, that they had in the in the Last Jedi. Yeah, that's, that's what it's called. Cool. Um, which I think is such a cool thing that they're going to keep doing. I was really worried that they weren't going to do stuff like that after like the reactions and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think that those scenes are some of the best in the movie. Yeah. Uh, the Ray Kylo Luke storyline in general, I think is probably yeah, the yeah. best storyline in Star Wars. Absolutely. Like yeah. quite possibly. Um, um I'm also okay, I'm also really loving like looking through all the pictures, it's all the behind the scenes stuff. It's mostly if not all practical. And I mean, it's yeah, amazing. It's so it. nice. That's why these movies take three years to make. It's refreshing, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's like, that's, it's years, real. Year and a half, sorry. Yeah. Um, they're going to kill C-3PO. There's yeah, no doubt in my mind this is C-3PO's last movie. Because, I mean, it, even if you look at the way that, like, Anthony Daniels has just been talking about it, yeah, it's very want much to do it anymore, like, right? I don't want to see it. I don't think so. I mean, Anthony Daniels, if you look through his IMDb page, his entire career has been C3. Yeah, yeah. Like, every what a career though. thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm one of the few, I think, like, supporters of C3PO. I, I love C3PO. <laughs> when I was, when I was young, and I first watched the original trilogy, I wasn't that young, like, relatively, because I, I discovered Star Wars a lot later than most people. You but idiot, I, you suck, I hate when you. I, when I first watched the original trilogy, my no, maybe not my favorite character, but one of my favorite characters was C-3PO. I loved C-3PO. Everybody's like, he's so annoying, he's like, like this dumb, he's not funny. I'm like, he's so charming. Yeah. I love C-3PO, just like his little like goofy mannerisms and like how he's always nervous. And I mean, it is what Anthony Daniels is known for. And it's what Anthony Daniels, yeah, the voice is so iconic. Like, um, how he moves around, how he waddles around. We got to see uh, Billy D. Williams and... Mm -hmm. um, Oscar Isaac in the Millennium Falcon, Love which it. is exciting. Love it. Um, I really, I honestly, I don't think that they're gonna kill off Lando in this one, and that's. I'm curious. I'm really excited. This is an interesting time in, I think, pop culture because a lot of these great, well-known franchises are ending. Yeah. Right. Uh. So the the new the sequel Star Wars trilogy, which is the end of the Skywalker saga, yeah. that has technically been going on since 1977. Yes. Is insane. That's actually coming to an end. Game of Thrones oh, just ended. Oh, 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 oh I know. <laughs> yeah. Game of Thrones just ended on Sunday. This yeah. thing that's been going on for it's not especially only been seven years, but it is one of the largest pop culture phenomenons that has ever existed. Marvel Studios just ended their Infinity Saga. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't they're not done. Yeah. But still, that's this <laughs> story arc that happened for twenty two movies. Yeah. Is finally it's over. Kind of I mean, it's all like it's lining up together. Insane. Yeah, they're crazy. all ending at the same time. And I think that's a really interesting 
uh, kind of thing that we're doing. You know, just <laughs> yeah. this interesting idea that these are all these great franchises are all ending. I have to I have to say real quick, I'm looking through the actual Vanity Fair article and just like seeing all the pictures, and there's something about oh, Star Wars, and I'm like feeling feeling warm yeah. inside. <laughs> yeah, I, I, seeing that, I, that. Did you see the picture of um, John Williams? Conducting and it's a picture of Gary Fisher on the screen. Oh, um, it brings warm feelings to my head. I'm yeah, excited. I'm I'm very excited for the movie. I I think that all of the signs are pointing in the right direction for this one. I, Brian, you don't know what that means to me to hear you say I, that. I really do think this is going to be. Uh, oh, that's not going. I'm so excited for it. I I cannot even imagine what this is going to be. Like kind of World War Two kind of thing. God, it's so exciting. Uh, I'm so like, excited. I cannot, my favorite, I cannot <laughs> wait to see what they do with that one. Yeah. That oh, that's the biggest thing. Adam Driver is still my favorite actor in Hollywood, and I think he brings so much to the screen. I Brian Johnson. I'm so excited to see what they do with that. Brian Johnson. Right. I have so much respect for him because he took this sort of. I mean, I love JJ, and I love what he did yeah. in The Force Awakens, but I, I, I mean, yeah. Kylo Ren wasn't much. In the Force Awakens, I think he was. He was. I mean, I think Carl. I think Carl Ren. He was headed in a certain direction, yes. but he wasn't. I think he set up Ryan Johnson beautifully. Yeah, but then I think Ryan Johnson took a direction that was amazing, immaculate. Yeah, perfect for I, the character, and just. I love that character. I think that if they land him correctly, which I have every reason to suspect they will, I, I think it's the best character in Star Wars. I, he's certainly the one with the most depth magnificently acted yeah just such an interesting character to think about i think he does the best of this entire saga of like this light versus dark yeah. the force versus the uh dark side you know light light side versus dark side yeah this whole idea has never been personified better than in kylo ren yeah. and i'm so excited to see like what their final like send-off is for that because mm -hmm. i think their send-off for kylo is their send-off for that message which is the thing they've been building since 77. And I, I, I'm very excited for seeing how that ends up. I feel like Star Wars, dude. Star Wars is pretty good. Star Wars. Star Wars George Lucas, good. if you're listening. Star Wars is pretty good. It's very good. They say very good. It's very good. Thank you. Um, they have some mis they have, they've had some missteps, but... I don't think so. I, I don't think, so. think ever. <laughs> Dude, Rogue One, I swear. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. We are, oh, geez. When we like, uh, we're almost an hour in, just by That's the way. Good. Well, so, I, uh, I don't have a whole lot to say about these trailers. So all right. Um, <clears throat> the last of the fun. Go, new trailers. New trailers. Terminator. I, okay. Oh, wait, this looks. I, I don't understand. Shopping. Okay, so here's the thing with Terminator. Half this trailer I like, half I don't. So, the part I don't like is anything with action looks god awful. Oh, god, yeah. I don't know how they managed to make an effect from 1991 look worse today yeah. than it was in 1991. I, I don't understand how you managed to do that. That's terrible, and you need to fix it. That's just. It's it's I it's frankly it's like awful. unacceptable that your yeah. movie that is twenty eight years after this effect was first put in place yeah uh it looks significantly worse I don't understand how you do that I mean right off the bat it looks awful and like, it just the 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 human animation so, like so like what like the animation of like Mackenzie Davis whenever she goes into CGI mode is so obvious yeah. and just it looks like a video game yeah um. And then the part of this movie that I can see myself liking is Sarah Connor and Mackenzie Davis and Arnold Schwarzenegger in a cabin mm -hmm. hiding, and I don't know what they're going to do. They're just going to talk. And I think that could be interesting, make like a gritty type of Last of Us type of Logan type of movie. I, I, I can see part of that movie being here. Um, again, it's one trailer. Yeah. Um, I can see that movie being a part of it, but it's definitely going to have these aspects of terrible action, mm -hmm. terrible CGI, bland, uh, bland, um, 
I guess just action. I was, I was yeah. trying to find the right word, but planned action sequences. It, and it look, it's going to be predictable, like every, you know, every other Terminator movie. Yeah, I really don't know what's keeping this franchise going. Is the money. thing Terminator money, Genesis, money, money. Terminator Salvation? Just I don't know what got those movies made, and I don't know what's getting this movie made. I think um, James I think Cameron is just very persuasive. But. He is, and he's a good money maker. Yeah, um, probably the best of all time. But what? Uh, Linda Hamilton coming back, I think is cool. Yeah. Uh, it kind of reminds me of Jamie Lee Curtis coming back from Halloween last year. Um, I think that's kind of exactly what they're doing. Yeah, so I mean, that could be like the purpose of this, and I could see that. I, again, I think I'll like Linda Hamilton in the movie, um, but uh, it, sh- it just doesn't need to be here. No. I don't think anybody asked for or needs this movie. Um, Toy Story 4. Uh, okay, I, I like this trailer more than yeah. the previous ones. Um, do you think Keanu is going to be the um, twist villain at the end? <laughs> probably. Uh, probably. Yeah. We'll see. Um, I don't know. I I like this idea, but I'm I'm curious. I'm, I mean, it seemed I, a lot more whimsical and a lot more Toy Story sure. than I think the previous one did. Yeah. Um, and I think I finally got where the new idea is because it. Originally, it feels a lot like Toy Story oh, 1. Like the very, yeah. Right? It yeah, feels yeah. a lot like Toy Story. Or even Toy Story 2, when the gang goes out to get Woody. Yeah. You know? Or in Toy Story 1, where they have to go get Buzz. Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, it, it's definitely there, but I feel like I get a lot more of the new idea they're trying to bring. I mean, which is this, like, I almost an idea to of some questioning extent, sentience. Actually. You know, like what is being alive? What is I don't the even purpose? I didn't you know? even really get that so much. I, but I think that's like what they're trying to address, right. and I think that they can. Pull, I can see them pulling it off in Toy Story. Yeah. Um. And I, I liked that like this. There, there's going to be. It looks like there's going to be this big set piece at the carnival. That was yeah. really fun from what I was seeing. Um. I think that's where the whole like movie is. Whole like second and third act. Are you kidding? Uh, yeah, and it's gonna be like this huge stuff. It's gonna be really fun. Yeah, like I, I think that that's gonna be a really good time. I, I'm coming around to Bo Peep. Uh, I, I just wish really that she looked like she did in the original. At least like it was like, this original really, model. Yeah. Um, oh, I think she the original little, model is. Uh, it's it's really chunky. Not, not no not like I I wouldn't say like go back to the original style of animation, but I would say to keep like the model similar, like the face similar. Like she's she's like a lot more animated now. And she looks like more CGI no, than a toy. I like that. Yeah, I mean, to some extent, I can see that, but I don't know. I can also understand why they would want to sort of up things. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I'm interested. I, I I'm not willing to dismiss this movie. Yeah. I mean, I doubt I will. I honestly, I think it's just going to be like another Finding Dory. I'm worried about that because Pixar is generally really bad at sequels. Yeah. But the two exceptions to that are Toy Story Pretty 2 and 3. Yeah. So I'm hoping that this movie is good. I think there's a good chance that it will be. Um, I like this trailer a lot more than I did the previous. Yeah. We got more Keanu since we've seen all of these. Uh, yeah, always a good time. Uh, once Upon a Time in Hollywood? I, I, this is the movie I'm looking forward to the most right yeah. now. This is. Easily my most anticipated movie. The reactions out of Cannes were nearly universally positive. Um, I, I just, it's the people are saying it's his weirdest movie, which I am uh, so excited for. I, I want to know. Possibly be. I have no clue. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know how, like, I want to know what weird Quentin Tarantino can do in today's age. He's made a lot of stuff. Um, and. Leonardo DiCaprio has returned to film. It's been four years since we've seen Leo on screen. Jesus Christ, when was he? He hasn't made a movie since Revenant. Because he did like three like right in a row. He did Gatsby and then Wall Street and then Revenant. Like one right after the other. Yeah. And the latter two of those are pretty draining performances, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he like was just like, I need like a break. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is his first movie since then, and it's been four years. And it's coming off of his Oscar win. This is technically his return his return off of his Oscar. Um and Brad Pitt being in uh, another Tarantino movie, Margot Robbie, uh just being Margot Robbie, Margot wonderful. Margot Robbie, yeah. Love Margot Robbie, Al Pacino. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, it looks like a lot of fun. 
I'll probably watch it, maybe. I'm so excited. I, Quentin Tarantino is just one of my favorite. I think my thing about Tarantino is when I see his weird, I don't really think weird. Like, I don't know. His, his, weird, his weird feels very normal to me. I don't know. It's, I mean, like, it's what, just like Pulp Fiction? Me. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess. But just with his other movies, too. Yeah. He's just somebody who, like, oh my gosh. He does He's what just... he wants whenever he wants to and doesn't really. I don't know. He doesn't. I feel like there's this kind of idea that he doesn't necessarily need to justify anything that he does. Like with, um, yeah. what is it? I, hate, I, I, that's not even, that's uh, not the Hateful Eight, is that the, the movie? Yeah. Um, how all of a sudden, just like in the second act, there's a narrator for like one scene and it's gone. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know. I, I enjoy weird movies, but I feel like it has to be. I, I think the reason for that is, um, if, I, if I was going to justify a very specific example, yeah. um, I, I think it's just because it's that he's making that roadshow type of movie where it's like there's an intermission in the middle and yeah. like, he's like, now that we're back, you know, yeah. like, like he's trying to make this kind I of. I guess, yeah. Uh, that's the justification out of you. I think it's really interesting. I really want to watch the Hateful Eight, the extended version that they released right now. Yeah. They released, did, have you heard about this? No. They released the Hateful Eight, uh, an extended version on Netflix as a mini series. It's oh. four episodes of a mini series. Uh, um, and it's just the Hateful Eight. Like, it's the same movie, it just yeah. has some added scenes. Um, and I'm, I'm very, I really want to watch that, but I just don't have three hours lying around. Yeah. 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 I'm just, I don't know. It's me personally, I'm not huge on Tarantino. That's my own opinion. Yeah, no, that's, that's, I, I definitely <laughs> see where people cannot like Tarantino. I've had some yeah. very passionate arguments with uh, a good friend of my sister's who's into film. She yeah. is Tarantino. Uh, but I think, I don't know, I, I'm very easy to jump on board of people who I can listen to or I can watch and I'm like, that's Tarantino. Yeah. It's like, it's why I like Wes Anderson so much, you know, like you watch Wes Anderson, you're like, oh, that's Wes Anderson. Yeah. Or you, watch, really, you listen I to really, an Aaron Sorkin movie, you're like, oh, that's Aaron Sorkin. I don't really get that with Tarantino, honestly. Really? I, I, I find such distinction in his movies that are is such he's just his writing style is so oh, fun to listen true. to and i mean i can understand why people like them his writing is impeccable he's a very good screenwriter and he pulls uh, he gets okay granted he gets a lot of talented actors yeah. right uh that want to work on his movies but he pulls some of the best performances of all time out of his actors yeah he is sam jackson in pulp fiction yeah. John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. Mid-90s John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Christoph Waltz. Two Oscars. Both for Tarantino movies. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio in Django. Mm-hmm. Gives one of the best villainous, portra- villainous performances of the decade. Uh, there are so many examples yeah. of this. And I'm really excited to see what DiCaprio, Pitt, Robbie are going to do in a movie together. Yeah. I think that it's bound to be both really entertaining and just extremely well done. Right. I cannot wait. Uh, okay. Let's uh, go on to movies that we've watched because this we is a the trailer. This is a length. It's one. okay. It's what? a good trailer. Oh yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> let's go movies that we've watched. Go jingle. Movies that we've watched. Watch anything good? I don't know. Awesome movie. What you I watched watch some movies. Where's do you want to talk about the movie that we watched together, or do you want to talk about? Uh, you want me to talk about the other we'll, we'll save that for another day. All right, all right, we'll save case. that for another day. So yeah. I saw Detective Pikachu. Ooh. <laughs> so <laughs> I yeah. am a pretty big fan of Pokemon in general. Uh, again, it's something I kind of found late yeah. in my life, but I, I think yeah. the magic. <laughs> I think the magic of Nintendo is that whether or not you played it as a child, and whether or not it was your childhood, it feels nostalgic. Um, that's the same reason I love Zelda. It's the same reason I love Pokemon, yeah. even though I didn't play these games as a kid. I yeah. found them in my teens. I don't have a Switch. That's something I, I wanted to save up for and get for college, because it's like the perfect college if thing. You, if you get the chance to play um, Mario Odyssey, which is the I've played some Mario Odyssey. It's fantastic. It's so good. It's so good. Um, so yeah, I, that's I think one of the big reasons why I love Detective Pikachu as much as I did. Um, Detective Pikachu is a movie where if you don't like Pokemon, I'm I don't think you'll like it. Yeah, uh, it's very nostalgia based, uh, which is you know a good bad thing. Um, it was so much fun. 
Ryan Reynolds is so enjoyable. There are a lot of Ryan Reynolds jokes in this movie that you would not expect to be in this movie. They're, they're very they're subtle, you know, like it's a kid's movie where you make adult jokes and the kids don't get it. But Some part of me still wishes it was a kid's movie. <laughs> it's re- recreating the law. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's a rumor going around that it was going to be a kid's movie. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. No, but Ryan Reynolds is perfect in the role. Uh, Justice Smith, is that his name? I think it is. Yeah. He is really, really he good. He was in The Fault in Our Stars, right? No. no. Um, Paper Towns? Maybe. He was in some... I think he's in Paper Towns. Yeah. He's in the Sun One John... What's his name? John yeah, he's Paper in Paper Towns. Oh, okay. uh, big Paul. He... Um, he's really good. I really hope this catapults him into mainstream, because like he had previously been in Paper Towns as like a side character, which is not like the most well-known movie. And not the best movie. Uh, and then he's also in like the Jurassic World movies. Kind of, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this movie is really, really good, and he's really good in it. And I really hope that it catapults him a little more mainstream. Yeah. Um, anything else that we saw? Um, not other than the movie that we watched again. Yeah. Yeah. That we're gonna save for another day, apparently. I watched. Um... Oh God, I don't want to know. I watched. Uh, cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Dude, <laughs> good flick. It kind of was. I I mean, it. it had heart. I don't know. It was. I didn't realize that it was. Um, what's their name? Uh, root. I should know this. They, uh, Lego Movie into the Spider Verse. Um, oh, I don't know the name. The it's so they were doing solo. Phil Lord. Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Yeah. There we go. Um, I did not know that actually. Just kind of it. fun. It's you know, it's it's dumb, but it's fun. Uh, yeah. very there's very there's some humor in it, but some I, very kid designs that I but don't like. At the but same time, I did chuckle a couple of times. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, it's a good time. It's a good time. Uh, it's a good Bill Hader time. is fine. Bill Hader. Anna Ferris is in that movie. Yeah, she's there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, want to go on to M three suggestions? I suppose. Big bad boy, the big bad wolf. I don't know. Mm. Uh, let's go jingle. Go jingle. Mm-hmm. We're gonna make a suggestion for you today, and you better watch it or else. Got anything good? I'm gonna suggest because Pokemon is so on my mind. Yeah. Well, okay, I'll suggest two things. I'm cheating a little bit. Because I already suggested oh, Booksmart. Oh, I already suggested Booksmart, but I'm yeah. mentioning it again. Because if this movie doesn't make money, I'm going to kill something. <laughs> this something. is exactly the kind of movie that people need to support. Because it is not like an Oscar drama, but it is perfect. Yeah. It is literally perfect. It's audience-friendly. It's not kid-friendly, but it's like, you know, it's something that audiences will enjoy. Yeah. And we need more of that. There's so little, I think, like, there's so few movies like Booksmart that are, like, really accessible to wide spreads of audiences, yeah. but also just so well made. Yeah. Like, it's so, there's so much heart put to the movie, and there's, I feel like there's not enough of these movies nowadays, and people need to support that. Mm-hmm. Um. And then the other thing is because Pokemon has been on my mind, I was rewatching some of the original series on Netflix the other day. Yeah. And it, every episode is the exact same, but it's so fun. Mm-hmm. I, I, <laughs> it's just, it's a good time. I love it. Um, and yeah, so my suggestion is the original Pokemon series yeah. on Netflix. It's wonderful. Um, yeah. I have a suggestion, but I'm. Tr- I'm- Really trying very hard to remember what it's called. Good. Um, to describe it, do I know what it is? Probably not. Ah, right. It's like something home, not gone home, but like. Is it like a TV series? No, it's a it's a video game. A video game. It's a video game. I got video games. Um, video games. It's got a little red robot in it, and it's adorable. It's so cute. It's open world ish. Um. Oh, this is it. Grow home. That's what it's called. Grow home. Grow home. Um, check it out. It's this very weird, very weird indie game. Yeah. Um, but it Those is it is gorgeous. It is adorable. It's really compelling. It's oh, got cool. great heart to it. Like um, the art. Style. Yeah. It's. 
I mean, I don't even really know how to explain it. it um, it's like not very avoid, but... yeah, it's not very linear. So you just kind of go about it in your own way. Mm-hmm. Um, very simple, very like easy, and just kind of easy awesome. going. Yeah, um, it's the kind of game that really doesn't have like you know enemies that you have to fight or anything. You just kind of wander around, <laughs> which is like my kind of game. I'm yeah. always, I I always love exploring things in games. Um, but definitely check it out. It's very cute. It's very fun. Um, so if you have a couple of dollars to spare, definitely check that bad boy out. How much is it? Uh, pff, I don't know. Okay. I got it for free with some like Xbox <coughs> thing that we have. Um, awesome. Let me see. Let me see if I can find how much it'd be. It's four years old. Wow. Wow. No, wait. I lied to you. I I didn't mean. I didn't mean grow home. I meant grow up. Grow up is the one that I like a lot. It's it's a sequel, but it, oh. it's much more fleshed out. Awesome. I find. Um. Anyway, yeah. Uh. So thanks. Thanks for listening. That's the end of the podcast. Uh. Thank you for listening to M Three Movies. Um. If you liked that, please please subscribe and turn us on for notifications. Um. What else? You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at M3Movies for both. You can go to letterboxd.com slash M3Movies to find some of our reviews. You can read my review for Bookstorm and for Texas Super Trio. And and mine. All the other movies that I've seen this year. And mine for The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. Uh, Endgame, Infinity War, and A New Hope. And I think those yes. are the only ones I've done. This is Jack writes a lot more detailed reviews. Yes, I do. <laughs> Jack writes <laughs> right, like really long. I don't know why. I just like, yeah. like write little short ones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the good, the yeah, bad, the ugly so. was my shortest. Great. Um, still longer than most of my ones. Um, what else? What else? What else? I'm stupid. You, you can get you can get grow home and grow up for sixteen each on Steam. Wow. I think they're ten dollars individually. Good. I mean, fuck that. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening. Please tell other people about us if you liked us or know people that would like us. Um, because we would like to grow. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for listening. I'm Jack. I'm Brian. Uh, we love your stupid faces. Bye bye.